It is now 6.04 on Monday, January 22nd. I'd like to call the Woodbury Select Board meeting to order. Do we have any adjustments to the published Select Board agenda? I do. I just wanted to give a super brief update about the town office. Okay. Can we do that? After the town clerk's report, please. Yep. Um, town I office update. I have one, Chris. Oh, yes, sir. We don't have to do it tonight, but we should do it soon. Is, uh, uh, the select board needs to make a decision on the stormwater infiltration basin that was going to be put in the school, um, on the school ground. Okay. Um, Are you staying for the meeting, Michael? I'm going to be here through the whole thing. Okay. Um, if we could have, if we could have you do that after the recovery officer's report. Sure. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. yep. Or maybe during the road commissioner report. It's a, I don't know how much. Yep. It's, it's pretty independent of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I really do think it's independent of that. Okay, any other adjustments to the published agenda? All right, hearing none. Uh, the approval of bills and payroll orders is in process right now, and they will be signed uh, after the meeting, uh, as will the minutes from January 8th and January 15th, which have been reviewed by everyone but not signed by the entire select board at this point. There they are. And they are coming around. Uh, this is our window for public comment, please. I don't know if I can open this, please. Yeah, right? Inside, uh, inside or out? My <laughs> if we could stop the rain that's coming too. Oh, we can cut it open back on. There's the one from last week. Okay. Any other public comment? Yes. Yes, please. I have a concern about the cabot road. Okay. I was up there Saturday. Mm -hmm. It didn't have any sand on it, but it was cold enough, so that wasn't my main issue. My main issue is when I come back down the hill and I want to go towards Hardwick, the snow is out to the center line of the Cabot Road. Mm -hmm. There's going to be an accident there. Mm -hmm. And it was what day that you went to Saturday. 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 And I just stopped over there and I that, took pictures. It's still that way today. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is someone the across? No. 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 It needs to be loaded and brought over the park. Because they used to go from this side of the road and plow it like towards that little field right there. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I still can't get back to my pictures. Any other public comments that are uh, pertinent at this point? There is my picture. Just somebody coming from Hardwick. So if somebody was coming down the Cabot Road and wanted to go, they would the, go yeah, across the, other the other hill, the other and if they got hit, it would be their fault, or they'd sue the town. Mm -hmm. okay. You want to see the picture? Hmm? I can post it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Long that's time the corner. Time. Okay. Mm -hmm. huh. today, right? Thank you for the picture. Yep. Mm. All right. Okay, hearing no other public comments, um, may we please have the town clerk's report, please? Um, we are still working on the town report. Hopefully finishing touches. <laughs> Did you get the number resolved with somebody today and you called me? Yes. Yeah, yep. Yeah, James got back to me and it's going back to the 95. Okay. I figured there was a typo, but to tell you which one it was, I couldn't. Yeah. 
No, there were the two that you, one you said did, and then there was the second one. The numbers didn't line up, and I don't know why, so I said, we'll call someone who might know why. Yep. Yeah, and he got it correct, and he sent it to me, and then he sent me another email to make sure I got it. Thank you, James. <laughs> That'll be in my group. This week, you will. You don't get what you're looking for, you have to keep following up. And since the last time we met, it's the town report that's what I've been dealing with. Okay. Sounds pretty reasonable. Past crunch time. Yes. Anything else, Mrs. Jerky? Nope, that'll do it. Okay. Um, Lizzie, would you go ahead and jump in with the town office update? Yep. Um, so Robin and I talked. I went in to take some pictures of the furnace with the uh, plan to figure out what kind it was prior to shopping around. Um, and in the course of that, we had some questions I couldn't answer, Robin couldn't answer. So she had Derek, which is her son-in-law, mm -hmm. um, come down and take a look. And he's a licensed plumber heating guy, and he's been doing it for, like, forever. Um, he does not think there's anything wrong with it and doesn't think it needs to be replaced. Um, and he also didn't think there was anything. I know we had thought there was maybe an issue with the pressure tank. Um, but he thinks the plumbing system is fine, so we, in my opinion, based on that, we can skip that stuff, stuff and not spend the but, money. But the insurance company wants to pay us to have a new one. Well, Seems like a waste not they to do that. They can they pay us and we'll just do something floor. else with well, it? Can't we can't money go for it. Right, right like, can't we just use that money towards something that we do feel needs to but, be? Don't done? they like to see invoices? Mm -hmm. Don't they pay based on what you send them? I can page in on the, for, for us because we own the property and you own the property. What you we do is just settle with them and you do what you will with the money. Right. It's when you it's have a bank. It's not like I have to show them what I did with the money. Right. And they're frank. If you saw the last email I sent around, they don't want to go to the floor. They want us to deal with. No, oh, I didn't see that. Yes. Which I don't understand because Whoa. that yeah, was a direct result. I feel like we should argue that. What, that yeah, really. I mean, it's fine, but that's that's where you guys need to, as a board, decide. Yeah, and okay. Mm -hmm. Well, do I'm ready to argue. I mean, yeah, I saw the $4, that's pictures. Some, I and Larry Smith was there not that long ago, taking mm -hmm. pictures and telling us what we needed to for mm -hmm. safety, and mm -hmm. the floor was there at that time. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I have the email that you sent today where she said that they would pay for the, the wooden flooring but not the concrete. Oh, right. So yeah. should I respond to that? Please do. Okay, I mean, I, yeah. I was there. Chris was there. We right. were, we were right working there. On it. And they, she's seen the new pictures. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's right that... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe they just need to, to hear. It seems like, did anybody estimate what it would cost to replace it with wood? Seems like it would be more. It could be more. I mean, I don't mean, see why we would want to replace it with wood. I think we would. No, I'm, we I'm not state. saying that. I'm saying that if they want us to want to pay for the wood and we'd rather pay for cement, mm -hmm. um, that uh, is an option. It might be an option. Yeah, we could look into it for sure. No, I mean, well, I mean, it, you guys already decided I you don't want to do the wood. They should pay us for both because so. both things were damaged. Yeah. And so. it wasn't like right. it was something they were hiding it. Yeah. There's no mystery. No. Mm -hmm. this. Well, I'll respond to it and. Can you see some me, please? Yeah, I'll, I will definitely just see everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Lizzie. Uh, Ms. Brandy, can we have the town treasurer's report, please? Yes. Uh, income over the last two weeks, $7,488, and it was strictly in delinquencies. Payroll over the last two weeks, $9,737.47. Accounts payable, $24,339.21. I transferred 23000 today into our checking. Um, we received the 45000 from VTrans, from the state of Vermont, for the Valley Lake culvert reimbursement. So the 40 what? 4500 4500 Yes. Oh, I thought you said 45000 Did I? Mm -hmm. I hope I didn't. <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> 4500 um, 
other goodies. Uh, W-2s, 1099s have been mailed out, done. Um, what else have I been doing? That's pretty much it. If there are any questions, and of course the budget. And reports. So Brandy, did you say you finished the W-2s for town employees? Yeah. I missed the lap of the Yes. I just want to make sure that I... Oh, sorry, that right. yeah. That was okay. Mm -hmm. I did. Okay. And if I could have that... Um, yes, you may. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anything else, Miss Brandy, that you want to add? No. Nope. Sorry. That's it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the town meeting warning that has to get signed. Well, we have we signed it, but we we have we have signatures on this draft. Unfortunately, what we have realized is that we have some. Do you feel confident to go back and change it and then bring it back? Mm-hmm. Are you guys fine with that? I'm comfortable that way, with it. That way, it's done tonight. If we can, mm -hmm. if we skip, can uh, skip and then if we can, if we can move on and oh. then come back with a you can bring a printer. You raw. You're on a printer. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 Did you bring paper? <laughs> Did you bring a cake? <laughs> like Hero John? <laughs> Seriously, I can mean, never be able to. Bring but out a fresh version if that would help. That would be amazing. It would be amazing. Okay. If we know the numbers, do we know the numbers? We do know, we do know yep. the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to make amendments to this and change it and then make the changes and we'll yeah. sign Rob that? It's, it's, it's only, it, it's, it's, I think there's only three lines that have to be modified. Okay, because this one here, John, already changed for me when I was at the office. Okay, so we will put the signature of the town meeting warning um, off until later in the meeting. Okay, everybody okay with that? That's what we need to do. Thank you. Okay, change both the budget and then. That's wonderful. Thank you all. Uh, well, heck. Hi, Paul. How are you? <laughs> How are you? So we're still grinding away. Um, uh, we, we finished the temporary repairs to the station. It's got insulation and sheetrock and the bathrooms put back together. So we're hoping to start moving out of the town hall this week. Hopefully I'll let you know as soon as we're out of there, we'll get the floors mopped and bathroom cleaned and turn it back over to you. We do got to move all that stuff that's the recovery supplies that are in the corner. I think we talked about you had some room in a storage container, so we got to figure out moving that. I can talk to you at some point. And yeah, when we find side. So that may, that stuff may drag a little bit till I find some time to. So move the uh, but the uh, space you said that you had is in the storage trailer. The new. Yeah. Oh, okay. Some of the stuff that's there is is uh, perishable. So what I was going to do is go through it and just give it to the food shelf. Like cleaning supplies that won't last, or stuff yeah, like that. Say this is cold for Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. So anything that's like that can't go. But anything else, we'll we'll, uh, we'll pass over. So hopefully, um, so so we've got temporary repairs done to the station. How do we want to attack this puzzle? <laughs> mm. So like tracking down what's going to happen with FEMA has been like nailing Jello to the wall. I had another meeting, so they've instructed us to do no more repairs to the building and not spend any more money on it. And, they said um, that specifically. Well, to stop doing. She work said, there. "Well, she said everything needs to be temporary to this point." So we've spent fifteen thousand the last month on temporary repairs. I don't have money mm -hmm. to pay yet, so, so hopefully the check will come. So, um, um, we, you know, and we have other costs about fixing the chimney and stuff. So that's just, the reason for that is we have. I had a meeting with the FEMA mitigation people today, and they're wanting us to. We've got an architect's report that says it's going to cost more than 50% of the building's value to repair it. 
<clears throat> so that crosses us over a threshold, I guess. More, more I'm sorry. More it's going to cost more than 50% 50 of the building's value to correctly repair the building. The architect's estimate was about $250,000 to bring the wiring up to code, the structure up to code, the slab has got issues. So anyway, that's a FEMA thing. Um, mm. He also, so then the next thing we've got to resolve is uh, what it would cost to rebuild that building in kind. If you were to tear it down on that site and build a code complying structurally proper building with ADA and all that stuff. So that's, I'm working with the architect on coming up with that. It's, don't know how long that's going to take because I got to, I got to have him meet with the people from FEMA so we can get the language right in his letter. Mm. Anyone dealing with FEMA knows that the language matters, right? It does. Yeah. So what he wrote is not acceptable to them right now. So that's what it's like nailing jello to the wall because I don't, you know, you think you, so, so the direction we're hoping to go in is that, that uh, once we establish, which I think we can establish, it's more than 50% damage, it means we would rebuild it completely new that they would pay up to, he's pretty sure that the reimbursement for everybody's going up to 90%, so that's that's would be 90% of the value. Yes? So if you guys were to rebuild it new, could you raise it up so the flooding wouldn't be? Well, issue? that's where, this is the next piece of the okay. jello. <laughs> is that uh, they, have a, they have a FEMA thing called, uh, I forget the name of it now, but anyway, it, it might allow us to put an addition on the new building at some point to replace that square footage uh -huh. and get that building out of there. Okay. That's the direction we're going. So the, the direction we're heading toward is either rebuilding in place, a totally new building that's flood resilient, however we do that, meets code, all that stuff, or they, they would uh, allow you to move that somewhere else and they would pay up to 90% of that cost. But I've got hurdles to cross, mm. so I don't have a lot more information than that. Do you have room for that much more? I, space? We're hurtling right now. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> this is the, the guy talking about it. You, you've got to go convince FEMA of all this stuff next. Mm. Uh, the, the, the real issue is the building's in really poor shape to start with. The slabs are all wonky and the back slabs. I mean, so just, okay. Mm. So that's the direction. That's So I don't know. That could take a while to resolve. Mm. So we're working. That's the direction we're going in. So I, I don't have a lot better information mm. than that. Um, if you have questions on that piece of it. Well, I've got a question. If, if FEMA were to pay for, say, an addition at the new site, yep. would that require demolition of the other building? Or would the building, could it stand and maybe be used for something else? Right, so that's what we don't know yet. So, so they may pay for that and pay for a flood buyout, which then it's the town would own the site. Again, it would be a space just like the space across the street would be green space, mm -hmm. which maybe is the best use for that space. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. We'll come to terms on that. Um, so the answer is maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what, they don't, what they won't do, I know, is, is to put another use in there that they're going to ultimately have to go pay for mm -hmm. if it floods again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if they buy out the fire station, um, then it would be like they determined for the other spaces? Right. Would be so the question that I didn't know the answer to is if we were to to move, and we could, if, if, if they said, okay, you can take this value and put it over someplace else, mm -hmm. get it out of that area, would they do the buyout still? Where the That's a town process. Huh. Hmm. Right so he didn't, he didn't know the answer to that question yet, so wow. that's where we're at at the moment. It's, it's still potentially possible that we could rebuild right where we are. They do things like, instead, you, it, it's hard to get the elevation up, but you could put the what they do it in Waterbury's this, this this concrete walls go up 36 inches mm -hmm. all the way downstairs. So if you basically set it up so they just open the doors, let the flood go through, and then you. Can you rebuild it and have it that just be your meeting room space? Well, no, yeah. So so right, one because everything is on the yeah. table of what could happen. So what I foresee for the near future is we'll be just using it the way we see it. Hopefully, construction will start in the spring on our new facility. Mm -hmm. We'll get. All the expensive stuff moved across the street and what's left over there will be stuff that's easily moved mm -hmm. and it will stay like that until we resolve the issue which I'm sure we'll all mm -hmm. be involved in because it will involve potential buyouts and potential funding mm -hmm. of something mm -hmm. so I just don't have good information on what that's going to look like as I said it's been really frustrating so I, I pushed them today can we have a direction 
Because mm -hmm. what I felt like right now is I have no direction. Mm -hmm. Like we're pouring money into this building. How much do you keep doing, right? And we need to replace the water treatment system. You know, the doors. We, so I just we said stop. We stop spending money. So Makes yeah. sense to everybody yeah, to money, kind of money that you don't have. Right. So <clears throat> any questions on that? It's so I wish I had more good information. I'll keep people informed as we move through the process. I've, I've got the architect. I've got to do another contract with the architect to start because what what they said on the if we were to rebuild I got to hire the architect to do an opinion of probable cost to do a basic plan of what it would look like a site plan and so we'll have to spend some money on that so I got to do a new contract with the architect and figure that out um, so that's that so I don't know what that's going to look like yet wish I had better information but it's, I'm as frustrated as everybody else <laughs> It's just you you know what I'm talking about. You just can't can you ever get a straight answer always? No. No. So uh, as far as our mm -hmm. theme of paperwork, we're about ninety percent through it. I think yeah. well we've got the problem I've got is since we volunteer, we can we recover the volunteer labor and they want me to do the same worksheets the town does, but then they're not set up for volunteer labor. So maybe you and I can talk and make sure I'm getting the right form filled out the right way. Yeah, I can do we can do that. Make sure I'm sure. doing it right. So I'll, I'll reach out to you at some point. I've got a couple fires in this week, so it won't probably be this week. But um, Category A. Yeah, that's a Category A. Well, yeah. the, the parking lot's a Z or something. It's a cleanup. And again, I, I'm trying to figure out how to put 27 fire calls mm -hmm. onto this paperwork. Do you have a project number already? I do. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. A project number and a disaster inventory number. You can fill out the... Okay. Labor I probably need to sit down with you with our web with our portal, and you can help me sure. understand I'll better. Through the portal. I spent several hours today. Got a bunch of information in there, but I got to the paperwork. Yeah. yeah, I got to the paperwork, and it didn't make any sense. So no, anyway, not too. It's not yet. No. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's pretty frustrating. Mm. So that's FEMA. Any questions on FEMA? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Who was your site inspector? We haven't had any site inspections. Oh, jeez. Mm. Have you had any site inspections? You want to hear a quick story about our site Go inspection? Go for it. Yeah, please. So yes, back on September 7th, yeah. the site inspector, nice guy mm -hmm. from Nebraska, Lenny Havel, Living. and Alfie went out and inspected the two bridges on Capit Road right. and Wilbur Road landslide. So since, oh, I don't know, the end of September till last week, I've been asking, where are these reports, site reports? Because in the case of the two bridges, if you guys choose to do a mitigation project on either of those, we can use the information on this site inspection that FEMA did. So it's a FEMA mm -hmm. site inspection, coupled with an architect's, uh, not, not an architect, an uh, engineer's, engineer's review. review. Yeah, we could do a mitigation project pretty, not simply, but we could get through it. So finally last week, this guy, Lenny, calls me up. Oh. And because I'm wondering where he is. You know? mm. And we've gone through a couple of project managers with him, and I'll get into that in my report. Oh, is, is so, Michelle uh, gone? Well, oh, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm talking with Lenny. He said, he asked me, is the work done? You know, after we went through all the, all the nuances for these three site inspections, I said, yeah, the work's been completed. And he said, well, you don't need these. What? Yeah. He said, since the work has been completed, you don't need this. Well, the, work, the, the work is temporary. Well, it's not, temporary. not really. <laughs> <laughs> the work is completed. The, let's take Global Road, for example. Oh, okay. Okay. We're completed. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need these. You make me feel so much better. No, it, it, only, gets, it, just it, it only gets better. Look to my report. Cool. Yeah. It is. So anyhow, I feel for Paul. Yeah. So is Michelle gone? You can tell, you can share. We can we just go ahead. And okay. well, so just, yeah. so we have to wait. <laughs> then I can finish with insurance. But so yeah. we've been having some challenges with one of the FEMA project managers, the, the person who was assigned to us. So it's not just me then? Not you. Thank you. I thought I lost my mind. But several other towns have made complaints that mm -hmm. the responses from this FEMA person were not timely, weren't complete. Uh, I had no help. She uh, she confused Woodbury with Callis, and I told her that's a no-no right away. Can't do that. Mm -hmm. right? So so anyhow, we have a meeting, and she's left to do some other type of work. 
And we have this another person named Devona Mason, and she's from Tennessee. And she is spot on, you know, timely with information, helping us with our spreadsheets. This is what you really need. Oh, don't I have no help. Don't, stuff like that. I said, oh, don't go anywhere. Oh, she calls me last week, and she says, I'm leaving. I know. I'm going out of a medical room. <laughs> so we're in another new one. I miss so the whole I have person. No idea who we're going to get. Okay. Medical leave, so yeah. it's been too too much. <clears throat> so you fill it in because I thought I was losing one because I'd reached out to Michelle a couple times and she said I'll be re two weeks ago she said I'll contact you Wednesday and I never heard from her and I concluded her in today's mm. meeting but she never called so that would explain that. So uh, Danielle Livalara, you know, share my frustration. Mm -hmm. And she wrote back when she heard, and she said, if I work for FEMA, I'd go out on a medical leave as well. <laughs> I was thinking that. Yeah. She didn't say that she was going on a medical leave. She better not. No, so we still, we, not. so for now, we don't have <laughs> one. Anywhere. No, we yeah. don't have one. So we don't have one right now. Is not that answer. I'm aware of. Okay. All right, I'm good. So the, I, I, I met with the state mm -hmm. people there, uh, Chase <laughs> Dearman. The state representative was in our meeting today, and he said, "Don't for not me to, to not clamor and rush to finish it right now. Maybe that's why." Mm -hmm. Is that state FEMA rep? Yeah, okay. they're the private mm -hmm. contractor that's been hired by emergency management to intervene between the oh. stakeholder and FEMA and the state. Oh. This you can be more confused because I wasn't sure really? what they do either. But mm -hmm. he's sort of like because I was able to share my issues that I'm having and they gave me some direction mm -hmm. that's not from FEMA. He told me with like the fire, so our projects are listed as completed too, two of the three because the cleanup, but the building's not complete. He said, leave right. that open, don't push FEMA. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know what we're doing yet, we need to kind of let, yeah. it, let it waft around. So that's, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's it. Part of it, we had to get budgets mm -hmm. done and get all our meetings done with select boards and so I've had no time to work on it, but I'm also like, like he said, I, I, she hands me these spreadsheets, and it's like trying to put a square peg in a round hole. You know, how do you take 27 emergency calls and turn them into forced labor? You know, I don't know how to do that, so we'll figure that out. Forced labor. Forced labor and equipment labor and a piece of hose, and if we use the jaws of life, I have to, and how do I turn a medical call into a, right, I just we're figuring mm -hmm. that out. That's all that's holding us up now. So that's FEMA. Uh, insurance, uh, I share your frustration with the insurance company. Mm -hmm. um, after dragging their feet for three and a half months or four months, I uh, got in the dust off with them two weeks ago, three weeks ago. I just sent a nice note saying, hey, just got a meeting tonight, like to know where we stand. And she, I got another nasty, really? long-worded Mm. How we need to wait, and it's I'm being pushy, and I don't need FEMA. I don't need this for FEMA. So I was I was informed mm. that that I don't need this, and stop telling them that. And okay, one of my our president James misunderstood and thought she wanted more information, so he put in, well, hey, if you need more information, this is when not knowing something was helpful. She goes, no, no, we don't need all your information. You guys aren't in a floodplain, so you can settle your account anytime. Mm. And I said, we're not in a floodplain. So I talked to the boss, and she says, oh, well, uh, huh, uh, we could have settled this in September. Oh, oh, Jesus. Jesus And I'm like, oh. so I called her, and she goes, well, you need to talk to the lady handling the claim. And same thing, they thought we were somebody else, and we were in a floodplain. And yeah, anyway. Is it settled now, then? Yeah. Well, it, okay, so she, so that day she sent me all the settlement paperwork, which I reviewed and promptly signed. And she said, I'll have a check coming out for you by the end of the week. So I called Brandy today and no check yet, because it's going to come to you and you'll have to reissue it to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I emailed her and I said, hey, Susan, where's uh, just checking up on our claim, not pushing yet, because they get upset. Mm -hmm. Just want to know, I got some bills to pay and just... I was just doing that paperwork today. Oh. Mm. So, good luck. All yeah. time. And they dinged us 30000 on depreciation. For the structure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is hurtful. And then there's the, the real claim of the building should have been by the appraiser was about one twenty five, and So they knocked us down to 91 and then depreciated down to 76. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
So that's the kind of money we're talking about worth considering our budget this year. They're, they're, we're getting dinged for quite a lot. So that's all money. But that, but that, you know, theoretically might be picked up by FEMA. Yeah, it all depends on what you can prove is the problem. That's the issue. Mm -hmm. But it's just be aware because, again, mm -hmm. looking at losses, if the town garage were to burn down, that's the kind of staggering mm -hmm. stuff. So anyway, we've settled, and hopefully we'll have a check, but I don't know when. It should have been here by now, but mm -hmm. don't uh, don't leave the door open, I guess. Well, so you have settled? Theoretically. Oh. I haven't seen the check yet. Oh, okay. the issue, right? Because so, mm -hmm. that was supposed to be here three weeks ago. So that's where we're at. Mm. Um, as far as new construction, again, we're still on target for May so-and-so, start mm. date, um, obviously pending passage mm. of all our budgets and whatnot, but that's where we're at. Mm. As I said, if Robin, I'll let them know as soon as we get everything out of it. might be within a couple weeks we get everything out of the town hall. And then we'll stay working out of there until we can move across the street, and then we'll use that building mm. for temporary storage until we resolve in the jello wall okay. nailing. Right. <laughs> oh, what FEMA can do with it. Sorry, I can't be more clear, but you understand my predicament. Yeah. I think you, know, you could do this if you do this, but you can't do this. You got to have that. Mm -hmm. So now I've had to hire another. I've had to. Oh, I've gotten the uh, um, elevation. I paid for an elevation study, so we're not in the floodplain, which we discovered. But I have an official mm -hmm. surveyor statement that says we're not in the floodplain. Just let that simmer through your. Yeah, exactly. You need inches. a survey with all the. Uh, you had to get a information that's available online. You still need to have a yes. surveyor. Because we're outside, because Woodbury's so high, and we're outside of the normal floodplain yeah. maps. And if you need it, you'll have to hire a. Uh, uh, it took me quite a while to figure that out, but a surveyor can do an elevation certificate, and that's what you need. Mm -hmm. So I can help you with that if you need one. I have someone. But that was another. So now I've got now I got to get an arch, the architect on board to do this other piece, mm -hmm. on, which I don't know what that's going to look like yet. Mm -hmm. But there we are. It's always nice to hear from you. <laughs> I try to keep it interactive. I hope they don't want to talk a lot because I could go for hours at town meeting if they want to talk about the fun. Oh, and so can you, yeah. I'm gonna, I'll be in Florida. Oh, no. <laughs> so Paul, um, who required you the fire department to get the elevation? Through? So that that's uh, that was through Deer, uh, Chase Deerman, the, the liaison between us and the state and FEMA. He said FEMA would need the elevation so certificate. Basically to, required by FEMA. Then. Yeah, to pr proceed through this, find out what we're going to do process. Okay. It kind of feels like you're just lobbing arrows into the dark, right? Mm -hmm. and to figure out what's going to happen. And every time it's like you got to pay for something that they need. But yeah. that's what mm -hmm. we're doing. So mm -hmm. we're kind of stuck there. Because again, my, my thought process is, is that I do we want to continue to pour money into that substandard mm -hmm. building that's getting flooded? Mm -hmm. My answer is I don't think so, unfortunately, but no. I'm just trying to find a way through that's not going to mm -hmm. put the town at a huge financial. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, we take the tax, the not the tax money, but the insurance money, and we put the building back together, but we are exposed to flooding and going right through the same mm -hmm. process again. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would not recommend that mm -hmm. as a course of action. It's very short sighted. Although, although I don't know what the course of action we will choose looks like at this point. It's just that's why I'm trying to be a little funny because I, we're at the point where I got to start laughing about it. Or I just go outside and jump in the snowbank at first. I can't start it. Right? <laughs> Any questions? I don't think I missed anything. There. No questions. Just get you, just, I'm here all week. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm in Plattsburgh tomorrow. I'm in North Hero Wednesday, but maybe Thursday or Friday. Sure. Stuff is burning again, so they're keeping me busy this week. Mm. Let me know. It won't take long. Okay. Because you, if you can show me how to fill the form out correctly, I'll sit down. That'll really help help me because I'm not fantastic on spreadsheets. Well, yeah, we'll, we should sit down. You're going to need the uh, hourly rate for your folks. Yeah, they've given us that 28 something for volunteer labor. Yeah, but for anything outside of the voluntary labor. Yeah, we don't have that. Just contracted stuff. Oh, we don't need but that. your fire, but your firemen are volunteers. Right, right? they're volunteers. Oh, just, yeah, that's why it's called a Woodbury right. Volunteer Fire Department. Correct. Even though they no get paid, paid ten no dollars, twenty-eight fourteen. Twenty-eight fourteen is the number that we've yeah. had to use. Yeah, and that's what we put in for all our categories. So all our placeholders are there. Yeah, we just got the only thing I got left is the uh, required submittal, and all the questions are answered. And we just got to submit the sheets. Mm -hmm. The sheet. The That's sheet. Exactly what it but is. Like, we don't have a labor <laughs> policy. We don't have an overtime policy. <laughs> yeah. They just want labor policies, overtime policies. <laughs> they want 
uh, my reimbursement or percentage of of benefits. We don't have any of that, stuff. so we, I got somehow got to put something in there that you don't have any benefits for your your cruise. No, no, there's That's no pretty benefits. Simple, there's, yeah, but there's spaces you got to fill. You could just put the zeros. Well, that's a, they want you to download. I'm gonna have to make a piece of paper to download. I have one. Oh my God! <laughs> we'll be in touch. Because <laughs> like they want eight things, and really only about one or two of the things I can actually create, because they have the mm -hmm. things that exist. So that's you got to create those things. You can show me how to bypass the other. You just don't do it. Oh, sweet. Okay. We can we can talk. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? I don't want to take up all your time. No, this is very. Helpful. Appreciate you listening yeah. to me. Thank you. I hope I don't sound. Dis I don't want to sound. Discouraged. I was a little. I am a little discouraged. <laughs> if you were discouraged at this mm -hmm. point, <sighs> I'm starting to just laugh about it. <laughs> yeah, it does feel good to be able to move our office back into a room that's heated. Yeah. <laughs> so we're working on it. And the culvert's done. Culvert's done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it hasn't flooded yet. It it's got a full. Part of culvert. Yeah, it's, it filled it up the night of the. It did fill it, it up. It filled it right to the top. I have a picture, and then luckily wow. it was bypassing right over the top of the sides there. So mm. it was doing its rain job. anymore. But mm. it was kind of kind of crazy it was that, full. that that was literally days after. Mm. <coughs> anyway, good thing. And Route 14 sank, which is nice. So yeah, they were trying to run 100,000 pound trucks on an inch of pavement on mud. <laughs> that didn't work. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, there's a quarry up the hill. <laughs> What's not as you as I watched them. They put that little skim layer of pavement in the trash truck. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> so they had to come back, cut it all out, oh, start all over again. I was like, so well, it was soft and muddy when they did it, and then it was, you know, just an inch of pavement. You're not going to take a hundred thousand. Yeah, it was a yeah, skim coat. Yeah, you're not going to put a hundred thousand yeah. dollars in truck on it. Hmm. I'm amazed that they got it done. I actually, I'm shocked. I mean, it was a good thing that it was fairly mild early in the morning. Yeah, but it was. They did have some. some they had some storms weather. to deal with, though. They did have some storms. All that yeah. snow, and yeah. But they were okay. They were good neighbors. I got to speak highly of, of Ireland. They they really accommodated us really well, and we got in. We had a lot of calls, and they got we got in and out of there. They made sure we could get in and out of there. Good. Mm -hmm. Good to hear. Good job. Thank well, you. Thanks, thanks for flooding the skating rink. Oh, thanks no to problem. The crew. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, it stays uh, frozen this week. Uh, if it doesn't, we'll fill it back up again. We got plenty of water. Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you to your next joy. Thank you. I'll be in touch. Right. It might not be, it's not going to be tomorrow, but I'll be in touch. Thank you, Paul. Good night. Appreciate Good it. Good night. Good night. Bye. Okay. Bye. All right. Uh, Mr. Larrabee, could we have the road commissioner's report, please? Uh, yeah. Probably not as exciting. I get exciting as Paul did. But, uh, you get what? It's not as exciting. Not as exciting. As I'm fine with it. Oh, not being yeah. exciting. Yeah. I love mundane. Lack of excitement. Mundane. Yeah. It sounds perfectly <laughs> lovely. So pretty much business as usual. Um, last meeting, uh, the board approved uh, buying a truck, salt truck. That has happened. It's in. It's in service. You happy with it? Yes. So far, yes, yes, it works great. There's a lot of electrical controls in it that took a minute to figure out, but oh, uh, but it's yeah, it works great. Works really well. Uh, and I stayed under budget, mm -hmm. uh, the budget that you guys allowed. Yeah. Uh, so other than that, we're just fighting the storms as they come, and. Mm -hmm. Sand is holding up, salts we got plenty of. I just I gotta call and order another load real soon, mm -hmm. but uh, that's not a problem. Trucks are holding up, um, employees are holding up. Is Greg working? Greg is not working. Okay. Nope. Um, I gotta touch base with him just to see when his operation is, but. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. It sounded like he was not going to be working for a while mm -hmm. uh, until that is <coughs> over with and he's healed from it. Mm. Um, the new truck should be in the next couple of weeks. Really? This time, yeah, they told me first, first of February. Plans for that. Mm -hmm. so, unless things got hung up or something, uh, it should be going to the paint shop mm. very soon. So we'll have that one. Mm. 
Uh, one question I had for the board is the old 550. Mm. What do you want to do with it? I know it's not worth a lot, but I feel like the town should get something out of it. Well, you know, we could try to sell it, get something mm -hmm. out of it. <clears throat> I'm taking what parts I need off of it. I'm going to take the tires because they're in really good shape. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the radio, the cameras, all the stuff that I can reuse. Mm -hmm. But we're still going to be left with a with a truck that don't run. So if you take the tires off. Then what? Well, I'll put other tires on. Okay. They still have, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll roll. It'll roll. It'll roll. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll just put some of the, some of the tires, tires yeah. that yeah. are down on tread mm -hmm. onto it mm -hmm. uh, from the other truck. So mm -hmm. I've had a couple of people interested in buying it. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, they're not going to give us very much. I just mm -hmm. don't want to do something without the board knowledge or approval. Mm -hmm. Oh, what are they? Have you guys talked numbers? People who are interested? Uh, I, I think it's going to be under a thousand dollars, honestly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you feel like that's reasonable given the state of the truck? I do, because I mean, it's not. It's, it's mostly going to be for parts mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the radiator is going to cost, you know, three to five grand to fix it, and the truck has got many, many other issues as well. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, I mean, I'm going to work as hard as I can to get as much out of it as I can during the sale, but mm -hmm. um, I just don't want anybody to expect too much from it. Do you think that somebody will buy it who works on similar kinds of trucks yes. and can use yeah, it for... that's the one person... Nobody's going to want to fix it and use it themselves. I don't think so. The one person that I talked to, um, he would use it for parts. Mm -hmm. He's a mechanic, so he would use it mm -hmm. for, for parts. And, that's probably the only way you're going to get value out mm -hmm. of this one because it's so far on. I would say we should get what we can. I mean, what good is it going to be sitting in everybody's way, yeah. rusting? Well, that's the other mm -hmm. thing I don't really want it in the yard. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, mm -hmm. could bring it up to Old Quarry Road. No, Just put it there. You know, <laughs> it would be fun here. <laughs> <laughs> I have exactly where it could be parked. <laughs> be, yeah. be nice. Do you have a decal on nice. the truck? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I haven't got it on yet because it's been cold and whatnot, but I do have one. Did you find the license plates I left? That was you. It was? Yes, I did find them. Thank you. That's for the, <laughs> that's for the new truck that's the new 10 wheeler. The one that was parked right next to the building? No? No, the one that's not here yet. The one that's oh. not here yet. The one okay. for Yeah, for Because I was confused because we, get, we just got another registration in the mail, and I was like trying to match up the plates, and I was like, this isn't working. <laughs> so the new registration that we got was for the 2014. That you just and the plate up. numbers just weren't matching, so I got it all sorted out. So the new mm -hmm. the plates that you brought mm -hmm. are for the the new truck, the new oh, freight okay. liner that's it's coming. Not here. And we should get new plates also for the new 550. But they're they're usually two to three weeks. Old. You've got a temporary place on it now. Yes, I was. I wanted to mm -hmm. do. I wanted to just use the plates that came that were on that truck. Mm -hmm. But the state won't let you uh, transfer plates unless you sell the old truck. Truck first. Mm -hmm. First. So, and I didn't know at that mm -hmm. point, I, I was mm -hmm. just too early. So, we have an extra set of plates. Mm -hmm. um, I was afraid that if I just laid it on your desk, if anybody walked in, I was like, oh, maybe let's stick it there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't hurt. I didn't know who did it, but thank you. <laughs> yep. Um, so, yeah, I think we're, we're all set with that kind of stuff. Uh, any questions? Well, Robin had a complaint about the bottom of the Cabot Road over here. The bottom of Cabot Road, the blacktop? Yes. Yeah, the snow, that the snow Right is by the stop sign? There's only one way. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I got I to gotta get the loader out here and move all that stuff. Across the street, over by the church, all needs to be moved. Yeah. There's some by the fire station. Uh, yeah, it's, it's built up. 
It's dangerous. Yeah. I also had a concern about Bailey Bridge Road, same idea. I can't see out. So when right. I get the loader out, I'll take care of it all at once. Stop by Blake Hill Road. Blake Hill Road, too. <laughs> yes. uh, so maybe that will happen tomorrow if the mm -hmm. snow doesn't, doesn't uh, build up too much. Mm. I think it's. I think we're clear tonight. There's no snow tonight. But it's going to be pretty warm, actually. Mm. Warm and wet. Um, I had a question. It may actually be a Chris question, but it's related to the road. It's Old Quarry Road, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe it's an Alfie question. I'm not sure where it's at. Well, uh, we ordered the signs. You know, the no parking signs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we'll, we can put those up as soon as they get here. Um. I went and hand cleared it. I don't know if you've pushed yeah, any of that out did. of the way. We did with, with the plow truck. Um, so that access is established. Hand cleared snow, you mean? Mm -hmm. um, um, it's just a bad neighbor relationship, which has been long established. Mm -hmm. What about the vehicles? That's where I was wondering. Yeah, about. they have until uh, the 1st of February to remove those abandoned cars mm -hmm. that have no plates on them. So they've been served mm -hmm. something? Oh. Yep. And so do we have it on record? So if we need to yep. prove that, it's, well, it has to go to the town office. But I have it. Okay. So, yep. And was it like? Did you give it to them, or was it served by a? Uh, sheriff? It was served by a sheriff. Oh. Okay. But there's no one there. Oh. Uh, no. Okay. So they weren't in private. Gotcha. So no one actually took it in hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which technically means they weren't really served, but they had it in uh, mail to two different addresses. Mm -hmm. It was placed uh, at the property, and uh, a non-certified letter was placed on the abandoned vehicle. Oh. And the date was when? Uh, the the date of, of when it was oh, served. when they have to? was February 1st. Okay. It was a month. Yeah, they basically had a month. Yeah. Essentially a month to do it. So. And then we take action after that, or? Yep. Yeah. And it's up to us to take action. Okay. No one else will do it. So. It's up and to us. What would that action be? To remove the vehicle. Away. Remove, it. remove the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so, yeah. As far as we go. So, well, we've got to wait till February. Got to wait till February. Okay. Right. Well, we've waited this long, right? Not that far away. I was going to say today's the 22nd. Next week. So it's really not, it's really not well, that far away. Hopefully, they'll get it out on their own, which would be the, the more, more peaceful thing. I would love yeah. to have happened. They want to keep. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it can move. It can't move. <laughs> I think it's got really flat tires and it's been there. It's, it's been there two years. Yeah. Oh. It's been pretty, pretty gracious here. Yeah. Mm. So. In any case. I okay. do have one other. Yep. Oh. I switched this one with that staple one because that's one I had erased. That one right there by put your hands that one. This yeah. one. So yeah. sign this one. Yes. Okay. Please. Sorry. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I assume this belongs in the record part. Um, I had sent an email to the three of you guys over the weekend, and Alfie, I don't know if you had a chance to see it, um, but it regarded the thing I wanted to bring up was um, timesheets and the idea of going with some slightly more detailed ones that Skip had come up with a while ago. Um, he sent me a copy. I tried to print it for you guys to see, but it, it did not come out legible, so um, yeah, I, was gonna say that I can... Yeah, didn't come through for me. Yeah, I actually didn't email it. I was hoping to have a nice one, and this is what oh printed. <laughs> oh, um, it's really nice. <laughs> so, it's... I can actually read it. It's like it's, a screenshot from your phone or something? No, it's no? a... It's, it's I tried to, I clicked print yeah. on the thing, skipped yeah. it, that's what happened. Um, but anyways, it's basically just a breakdown of the type of work that you guys do, and then there's room to fill in, like, how many hours for each type of work. Um, so, I wondered your thoughts on moving towards doing that. Um, I'm open to looking into it. it it's, okay. it's It's going to be a bit of a challenge because there's a lot of information needed there. Okay. You know, there's there's regular time, there's overtime, there's sick vacation time, and the time cards we have now, they have that all in separate categories. Okay. And now if we're going to add activity, uh, you know, if we're going to 
there'll be enough room. But I'm open to work on it, on it, and see if it's something that we can make make work. I also agree that it should be a copy. We just make a bunch of copies of it, okay. and I fill out the date. And after they're at the end of the week, they fill out all their time, mm -hmm. and then I sign it at the end, approving the time. Okay. They could do it every day. You know, when they know. Well, yes, they no, we do. We do our okay. time now. We do our time cards every day. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, it's done every day, but it's it's still different every day. Not broken down. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, open to, to working on it. Uh, okay. If you can get me that, and I can probably will want to make some changes to it. And I won't give you this one. Add <laughs> add some of some activities because mm -hmm. there's going to be some activities. That we do that nobody knows about. I believe uh, it. Yeah, Unless we they work on the crew. Well, I mean, it'd, it'd be good to know. It'd be it'd be good to know. You know, it'd be great to know. Coffee break. Um, <laughs> for you guys in the office, if so, I know the idea of electronic timesheets has come up a couple times. Um, if these were done manually by the guys, just to keep it easy for everybody, and then submitted to the office on paper. Would it be a simple thing just to scan them in so that they're in the computer somewhere and can be pulled up easily? I mean, literally, the spreadsheet that Skip created, each guy goes in, okay, I did four hours, and it's listed all out. Down at the bottom, there's personal time, sick time, vacation. You just click it, uh -huh. and it totals it all by itself. Okay. And then at the end of the year, it's all in one. So you're, you're saying just doing it online Digitally. in the first place is easier? Yeah, and then yeah. Right, they could be emailed everybody. to me. Not everybody is computer savvy. Well, that's where they need to be trained. Because this is okay. slick as... Or if you have one who's more, <clears throat> more likely to be able to do that than others, it could be their job. Somebody's duty. Skip? You want to be the... No. No. But <laughs> <laughs> worst case... We could have them fill it out manually and train someone at the office to put it on the put it on the spreadsheet. As Brandy said, it's just filling in numbers, and the spreadsheet does everything. They just mm -hmm. totals it for the week, and mm -hmm. then it, it sums it for the year. So you get a readout of lots of stuff. And if you know, I, I understand. People aren't tech savvy, and especially with spreadsheets, so mm -hmm. it might be a little intimidating. But if they just fill it out manually, I could train someone at the office just kind of put a four in, or an eight in, <laughs> or something. And, the, and honestly, the spreadsheet does it all. But I'll change it because Brandy wants it by a calendar year. I want it on a fiscal year. You want it on a fiscal yep, year. That way, the benefits. That way, when it's audited by the auditors, they can compare theirs to actually what I have in NIMREC. and it's. So slick. I can change it. Mm -hmm. I can change it to a fiscal year. Yep. Yeah. But I'll wait to do anything until I hear. You don't have much for technology at the garage, do you? A laptop. There's a laptop. That's it. Yeah. So. And a tablet. Yeah. But that's, yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. We've got a printer. So we're, we're, we're getting there. Is that what that is? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you, so, you guys think, Chris and Diane? I haven't, I didn't really hear from you guys if you felt that that would be a good move, but what? going with the printed version oh. of the more specific timesheet? Yeah, no, I think it's, it's good to know. I mean, when they used to do it, and I think to keep track of, somebody needs to want to keep track of how much time you spend on these different things. I mean, you know, but. Yeah, I'll be curious to see the list yeah. of, of activities. Mm -hmm. yeah. I will, I can email it to you. I Why know not? from my experience doing the reports after different um, grants and aid projects, um, you know, Fumbling through all the paperwork to find what's what is takes a lot of time. Um, so having something that's a little bit more accessible and easier mm -hmm. to to pull up the information would be mm -hmm. would be helpful. I would have saved Skip and Danielle lots of hours. Yeah. Which we're somewhat challenged now figuring out 
the timesheet says they're as, as they're now, <laughs> just pieces of paper, ten hours, long, and trying to reconcile those as to where the road crew worked, how many hours they worked. But Alfie has led us through that, so we have a pretty good idea of where the road crew was on specific days. Mm -hmm. Uh, July and August, I believe. You know, we're going to have to look at September, too, I think. But anyhow, it would eliminate Alfie from sitting down with us, even though it's nice to sit down with Alfie. And, uh, you know, so it would work. See, it seems to me... Yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah, you, you either spend the money at the garage having you guys sit down for five or ten minutes, whatever it takes to enter that, because there's a cost to them entering that. Or if you don't spend it there, you spend it at the town well, office. they make more money than yeah. <laughs> That's right, you pay us more money than the office. Then we need a rate. <laughs> oh, you can put little numbers in there. So you just, you, you figure that in, that it's going to be, it's going to take some time on, you know, the guys are not on the road, but maybe it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the reason why we did it is because when I was back in my auditing days, one of the things that you checked on is road crew. You know, what they did and how the vehicles were maintained and things like that. And back in 2015, I think I was an auditor, and there was just no records. You just mm -hmm. did not know what happened. And it was brought up about pulling sand. It would be cheaper to have an outside company do it than our guys wasting time mm -hmm. spending mm -hmm. two months hauling sand when they can be working on brush or something else. Mm -hmm. And that one was never evaluated because the timesheet stopped midstream. Mm -hmm. So, so it seems like we need to find a way to get more granular data. So Alfie, I'll send you a copy. Do you want to start with that, and then you can comment on it, and we can kind of go from there. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, okay. I would like to see the list of, of activities. Yeah. Okay. And then we can add to it or take things out or if out, needed, yeah. whatever. It's been. I mean, it also has special. to be semi-simple. Yeah. Know? Oh, totally. Otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, you've got a four-page document. Yeah. That we're doing every single day. I totally it's get that. Be I don't want to create. Say. It's got to be simple. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't want to create something that's you know just a pain in the butt for you guys. So I think mm -hmm. there's got to be a way to make it really easy. And um, I think paper makes sense for people who are used to working with paper. I'm a paper person. I would prefer to do my time <laughs> tracking that way. So yeah. um, if we can get it on paper, and then if you guys can get it in the computer, I yeah. think. That'd be awesome. Is that something that Pam could do? Yes. So. Can Mr. Chairman, can we talk about Carol Ray's Bridge? Might as well. Did you? I ran into Carol Ray. Huh? I ran into Carol Ray. Oh, really? Is that why she's not here? <laughs> <laughs> This morning she didn't plan on coming. Okay. No. She, I saw her Saturday night. She went oh. over Sunday. So. Uh, no. It was at the uh, Highland Center for the Arts. It was oh. to bluegrass. Mm. It was little. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 20 minutes later. I think, Carol, we're going to go back in. Intermission's oh, over. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, oh. She did a little research and talked to the state forest and parks, and um, she sent us a, lost a picture of a bridge. And Dave Wilcox, who is in charge of all the bridges, said that they have one that you could just put on top of that. Did you talk to him, Tay? No. Okay. I think he said he left. I didn't you know this was brewing. Oh, okay. Well, no, it just brewed yesterday. <laughs> Do you so anyway, Dave told me that he that uh, they have a bunch of bridges down at Fontaine's. That's uh, where that one came from. Yeah, and he said you could t take another one. Maybe it would be slightly larger and put it on top. They're all the same size. They're all the same. Okay. How would he you thought anchor the it? What? You could double it. 
You could double it, I suppose. So did they? Did they give her uh, uh, estimated weight? Said thirty thousand. Thirty three thousand. That's on the second page, Alfie. The design is. But they did specify that was for fourteen feet, um, and I. Do we know that that's... 14 feet or less. Or, or less, less. Yeah. yeah. Do we it's, know it's the not, length of that? It's not more than that. Okay. Is it's it the, less the, than 14? The actual span. Yeah. You mean from one end to another. The span means not the between way. the abutments. Right. Mm -hmm. It's less than that. Mm -hmm. It's probably... I'm going to say 12 feet. So then those numbers, it will actually carry more, but we just don't have proof of how much. Right. So well, one thing that Dave mentioned to me that I, it had not occurred to me was that the fire, the big fire trucks are longer than that, so they're not like all on the bridge That's at the right. same time. Exactly. It never occurred to me that that makes sense. It's true. You've only got one axle on at a time. Yeah. The front one goes over, it's on land, and the back mm -hmm. one goes over, and it's, mm -hmm. there's only, so uh, like half the 32,000 pounds is 12 ton. Mm -hmm. A ten wheeler weighs more than that. Ten wheeler with gravel mm -hmm. or sand weighs more than that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much a fire truck weighs. Uh, we got it up there. Uh, Paul says the big one is forty thousand pounds, and the small one's twenty. Okay. So. And that they would not refer refuse her service if she had a fire up there. The small truck could get across that bridge she's got now. Right. But she's got a pond up there, or a beaver and pond. Long, so they don't need a fire, I mean a water truck. But even the big trucks, like you said, an axle, you're still There's gonna only be... one axle on So you're getting like half the weight. Yeah. Right. So you're getting yeah. 20, 20 yeah. tops. So what, what do we do to satisfy her? Nothing. I think we're good. I think that proves we're good, right? I mean, that's well, how I take it. last time she was here, she demanded signs. She wanted uh, weight limit signs. Mm -hmm. So do we put up a 12 ton weight limit? Well, you said at a previous meeting that we really can't do that. She can demand it, but we don't I, have the authority to do that it. or to enforce that. it. Yeah, I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't. It seems like this is what she's asking for. And I luckily haven't, I haven't done her railings. I just have been busy. I've got all the lumber sitting on the garage floor mm -hmm. ready to go. But every time I think I can do it, it turns up in snows mm -hmm. or rains or we're fighting mud season. I mean, it's not like we're sitting around mm -hmm. twiddling our thumbs. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think that's what she's concerned about. Um, so I, I don't know. I think mm -hmm. she's the one that created this. Mm -hmm. So does that satisfy her? If you put another... For, for this week or <laughs> we're going to be talking about this again next week. Okay. I mean, that's what's irritating yeah, to me. I mean, this has been going on and on and on, and it's like the more we do for her, the more she needs and wants. Um, well, what you, well, Dave thought that you would be able to... Yes, absolutely. Dave thought that you would be able to determine whether the additional bridge thing would help, would work. It would certainly help. Yeah. It would certainly, I mean, because it's, it would double the capacity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you were 32,000, you'd be now 64,000. Yeah. But I think we've determined it's unnecessary based on how much the fire trucks weigh and the fact that it, there's only going to be two sets of wheels on the bridge at any point. Why would we give her one if she doesn't need it? Right. I... Well, it's... I wouldn't do it, it just to make cost, her happy. It wouldn't cost, I mean, I mean, it would cost us for the guys to do it, but they would lend us the bridge. But why would we do it if we don't need it? Uh, it's a waste of money. Well, if Paul, yeah. It. We should have asked Paul about this when he was here. Right, yeah. I mean, well, we got Paul's numbers. Yeah. Yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, right yeah. yeah. So that's all we need from his is what he weighs. What he weighs. And he said he would not deny Refuse service. service. He's made right, but he clear. said he would, he would give it give service with a small truck. Still service. And yeah. I mean, right. That's and the, right. And you could put a big truck on, on the other side, side of the bridge. And it's only 12 feet different. You know, I mean, there's ways of, mm -hmm. of working mm -hmm. that. Uh, all they need is a pumper, which is mm -hmm. the small truck would be a pumper, and they can run mm -hmm. a hose to the, to the water mm -hmm. source that's there, mm -hmm. and then they have all the water they need. They don't mm -hmm. need 10 trucks mm -hmm. to get across that mm -hmm. bridge. 
There's not a room. There's not room enough. There's no room anyway. Once you get over there, there's no. So I think I think with this, we've done our due diligence, and I'll get up there and put the railing on ASAP, and then we're done mm. until mm. we get to a to a permanent fix for this, mm -hmm. and that's a ways out too, as we all know. Mm. So class four roads aren't top priority either. So I mean, well, I think that's this is the whole a pretty good fix. Yeah, that the whole that's the whole thing that's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. She's getting a lot out of this town mm -hmm. for having a for bridge her. just there. Just there. This mm -hmm. fellow had to pay his own. He had to pay mm -hmm. his own money out of his pocket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why 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 are we still hearing this? Squeaky wheel. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But I will get the railing up there because that could be considered a safety issue. So I will get onto that. Mm. And I don't think we should put signs up. I don't think that is something we should do. And you don't think we should put a, do the other bridge on top of the bridge? It's a temporary well, The structure. one thing you'd have to, you'd don't have to scrape it up, you know, get all the snow or ice or whatever's on there. Well, you, yeah, there'd be some work. And now it's frozen. Mm -hmm. So you gotta you gotta put the, the next bridge, layer of bridge, right on the top. So that means you gotta dig some of the dirt back. back. Mm -hmm. And then you gotta oh, put dirt, dirt back on, on there okay. because now you're raising it another ten inches. Oh. So you gotta have more gravel to put oh. over the top. So it's a, Oh, so it's not just like a putting together a sandwich. There's dirt on top of that bridge. No, <laughs> no. Oh. Uh, Sorry, I don't mean to be harsh, but I've just, I've almost had it with this, really. I mean, she's getting a lot out of us. So we'll get the railing up. Sounds great. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I did ask again if they wanted to sell the bridge. He said no. Yeah. <laughs> Even though they have a bunch of them, but... Okay. I mean, we might be able to go buy one from Fontaine or have him make us one special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's an option. Well, that's not, uh, not going to be the permanent solution. Sure, it could be. Why not? Well, sure, it could be. Yeah. Really? Absolutely. The abutments, no, the abutments oh, okay. are... That would be separate. Would be separate. That'd be separate. Mm -hmm. But oh. you'd, have, you'd have your bridge. But you'd have a bridge. You'd buy your bridge. Mm -hmm. They're like five or $6,000. Yep. Yeah. And, um, and, and then, then you buy the abutments in the concrete. We could do our own work there. But we, we wouldn't get reimbursed by FEMA, right? If we, we would. Oh, yeah. We would. Even yeah, if it's would. not engineered? I thought they would only reimburse if we had an engineer come out and design something. No. Did I misunderstand that? Well, if you were replacing it with a light bridge, uh -huh. also, if you were adding a mitigation project, then no. Mm -hmm. Which is much different from replacing it with a, with a light bridge. Oh, okay. Then you would need an engineering study. Mm -hmm. For mitigation? That's correct. Okay. Um, but replacing light for well, light? Keep it the same. Is... Light for light. Oh, okay. No, I didn't get that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Great. And we have two projects reserved for whatever you guys do on a permanent basis. On a permanent basis. Whether it's a mitigation project or replacement project. A replacement project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Replacement is, I think, what and we're shooting. two open projects. Yeah. Okay. Which expire January, January 14, 14, 2025. Yeah. Gives us some time. So they're not going to cost a half a million dollars each. That's good. Certainly <laughs> not. <laughs> good case. Okay. No. If we do it ourselves, no. Mm. So the two bridges are <coughs> the two bridges are different. One's a class four, one's a class three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The class three, we're going to have to do some engineering there. Okay. That's the Darnesses Bridge? Yep. Yes. That one's big too, right? Is that a bigger span than Carol's? Uh, it one? is a bigger span. It's not that much bigger. Though. It's not a lot bigger. Okay. But it, it's it's it, it seems, seems bigger, bigger maybe because it's higher. Yeah. 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 It like sits up. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's not that much longer. Okay. Well, the, the uh, Darnesses Bridge is 30 feet. Right. And Carol's Bridge is 20 feet. 20 feet. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's the length of the temporary bridges we've put in. Oh. The the abutment span is is different. All the other different. Okay. Gyr Gyrus's is definitely wider than Carol's. And yeah, the orientation is kind of wonky. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's not. It's not square. And that one will have to be engineered no matter what because it's class three. Is that, I did think I so. Because right? we get okay. state aid. We get state aid on that road because it's a class three. Because it's class three. Mm -hmm. So okay. the state's going to say, oh. 
you got to have an engineer mm -hmm. study. Mm -hmm. yeah. For class four, we're not getting state aid, so mm -hmm. we can probably get away with engineering mm -hmm. ourselves. And <clears throat> I am. Skip, chime in here anytime yeah, you want. Go ahead. Well, we have the Lenny report, oh. yeah. which has some engineering. That's you know, true. What Tons. he would do and with the buttons and things like that and soils. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you seen mm -hmm. that? I sent that to yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't print it off yet, but it's, oh. yeah. hopefully it'll come out better than Liz's. It was told mm -hmm. yeah. that it was unimportant. It was unusable. <laughs> well, he said so. <laughs> I just like I didn't study it. <laughs> <laughs> he said you don't need it. Yeah. So we do have options there, mm -hmm. but okay. I think I think we should probably get started with that because there's a fair, there's a fair amount of legwork to do, and if we want to do it this construction season. We'd be ready to go if we get this life work done. So you're thinking no engineer for Carol's Bridge, and did you ever talk to Nate? I haven't. That's okay. the next. That's my next step mm -hmm. is to talk to him about okay. some lesser engineering. Yes. So we should be reaching out to engineers now for the Jarnus's Bridge, probably. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's Nate. That's, that's, that's Nate. Oh, oh that's Nate. Nate. yeah. Okay. And I guess I thought that was a class four road too. It's definitely class three. Mm -hmm. It's class three. Mm -hmm. class three. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Got it. So your plow trucks go over that bridge? Yes. No problem. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, a, that's a truck bridge. That bridge is definitely okay. it's rated up there for you know, yeah. I, I would drive a ten wheeler over that. Yeah. And not, not even be scared. But right now I'm taking the low pro, so it's Mm. That's totally fine. Except no, for the no. skew of the bridge, it's not. It's a weird bridge. turn. Yeah, no. it's, it's hard. Hard. But we were in flood mode, and uh, you know we were in a bit of a hurry, so we weren't really looking at the skew. Plus, I needed room on the on the downstream side of it for the excavator. For the excavator. While I was oh. building, mm. and building mm. the abutment. So, mm. uh, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, so I will call. Nate will be my next step mm -hmm. there and see what his availability will be. Because his, when I talked to him last, he was not interested. He had no time for us. Mm -hmm. But that was right after the flood. That was, you know, yeah, hopefully things have calmed down a little bit. Maybe more. things have yeah. settled and he can start looking at it for us. Now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So you could tell Carol that you're going to replace the bridge. Let's not do that right now. Yeah. Is that the path forward to replace both bridges then? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Is there there's not another path? There's right? not there is another there. path. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if you know, when Carol calls me. What she did. I'll talk, I can talk to Carol. Okay. She calls. You get all the calls. I get. A couple. They made pretty Thanks. good friends last meeting. Oh, okay. As I understand. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they <we> did. <laughs> all right. But Thank yeah, you, Mr. Larry. We've been our path all along, I think. Yeah. As far as the communicating Those with work. the board and her has been, yes, Carol, we're going to fix your bridge. Mm -hmm. There's never been a mystery There's to never that. Never been. Right? <laughs> I mean. So, okay. Thank you, Mr. Larry. You're welcome. Uh, all right. Ms. Lindsay, could we have the recovery officer's report, sir? Yeah. So for the week of January 7th through the 13th, uh, Danielle and I continued creating projects, uh, creating essential elements of information, all those documents. For all the projects, I attended a select board meeting on January 8th, met with Danielle on January 9th, and Danielle and I had a Zoom meeting with FEMA on January 11th. For the week of January 14th through the 20th, Danielle and I created, continued to create projects and doing the essential elements of information documentation. I had two calls with FEMA on January 17th and 18th. Uh, meeting with Danielle on the 16th, meeting with Alfie last Friday on the 19th, 
And on January 16th, I participated in a webinar that was put together by the League of Cities and Towns that had uh, Vermont Emergency Management and the Department of Public Safety on it. And it dealt with budgeting and how you should uh, how you should create a line item in your budget for FEMA funds. Mm -hmm. And what they told us is that so if you go out and do a short-term loan, the, uh, the interest on that loan as it accrues is not uh, a FEMA reimbursable item. So you're going to have to swallow that, that cost, unfortunately. So what are we doing for this week? Uh, scanning all the invoices. So Brandy has this nice folder about this there. Mm -hmm. with invoices from uh, various uh, gravel pits, menaches, and others, uh, invoices for rental equipment. And what we have to do is now match up all those invoices with the work that was done. So say if you get a load of like a thousand cubic yards of Three-quarter inch minus, how am I doing? Sure. Good. Okay. <laughs> I'm learning more and more about three-quarter inch minus. And so you get a thousand yards of it sitting in the yard, but each of these individual discrete damages maybe would use 400 yards. So you get to break apart that a thousand yards and spread it over like three or four different projects. So that's cumbersome yeah. to say the least. So you get an invoice that has a certain number of yards, and you have to. Yes. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So it's. You get it's, ten slips in one, one day, and then figuring out. Yeah, it's, it's pretty challenging. But and one invoice that comes along. It's along. kind of the same thing they have to do for the grants and aid projects. So that's one of the challenges we're facing, and also the challenge that we're facing is the uh, printer at the uh, town office doesn't have the scanning capability. So my poor scanner is just like burning up. I think the yeah. town, uh, excuse me, old man. I think the town should buy a new sc uh, printer scanner. They are not very expensive. I mean, I have one at home that works better than a lot of town office. I think I paid a hundred dollars for it. Mm -hmm. Well, this is so much quantity. Right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I mean, the copier is has the capability, but they refuse to come in to show us how to do it. They want us just to um, figure it out. Yeah. Figure it out. <laughs> skip is, the two skips have looked at The two at skips that. have been, yes. Yeah, no. the two skips just shake their heads yeah. looking mm. at the instructions. Mm. Mm. So, mm. You know, it's, it's not an easy fix, and I don't understand why you're your printing folks won't come out and enable that feature because the feature is right there. Yep. You know, just scan, scan to email or scan to a file. It does nothing. Do you think hearing from the select board would make a difference to the printing people? They can try, but they. Well, it has to first. It has to, the whole thing has to be hooked up to the internet, right? It is. Oh, it is already. Yeah, it's, in, okay. it's in their office internet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. So if you scan it to a file, mm -hmm. mm. I, I got the okay from Mr. Marcosani that I can plug my laptop in to the uh, network mm -hmm. and download any scan files. Mm. So I got the okay. Reluctantly, I got the okay. And that printer that you have, isn't it? Didn't it used to scan? Or it does now, but the quantity that we're looking at having to scan. Oh. Skips it, and it's Skip ridiculous. It would burn it right up. And oh. It's not capable of that mm. quantity. Of it just goes like one at a time, is it? Correct. Yeah. 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 So I was thinking of bringing it down to uh, Staples yeah. or someplace like that. But they would just do like a massive dump and right. They need to be sorting back through all that. So all then you have to. Yeah. So I think it, it, Danielle and I talked. It would be better if we categorized, you know, for this certain project we need. You know, these invoices for this much money. So to categorize them by project. So instead of having this one big batch file dumped on us, mm. we'll do it incrementally by project. Mm -hmm. It would make our life 
much easier. So should we buy you a print uh, scanner? No, no. Don't. Okay. <laughs> no. Well, Sounds like something that could be cured for a few hundred dollars. But. Skip Marcasani tried calling Canon today. Mm -hmm. Three different reps and mm -hmm. nobody answered. Mm. So. That's the people that run the photocopier? Mm. Really strong. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. Hmm. Yeah. Is it, is it a high-end scanner? I mean... Oh, that thing can do... A fancy machine. But it it doesn't... It, uh, yeah. I'm just wondering, can we just replace it for $300 or $400 or even, even $1,000? It's capable of doing it. It's just they... You're talking about the print, the, the copier. The copier. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he's talking about getting another... To solve the problem, can we just buy a new one? And let them have their junk lease back? No, it's not. It's... it's um, Big, it's the copier. It's the big right, but, it's still, but she said it's a lease. If they're not willing well, to come and help us make mm -hmm. it work, mm -hmm. then they can have their lease back and mm -hmm. stop paying their lease. Mm -hmm. And that's how I would operate. Mm -hmm. They have a machine. They own the machine. They should come fix it. Yeah, that's true. So that we can take the benefit from it that we're mm -hmm. paying for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does seem unusual that they are you know, reluctant not to come and make it work for what. Yeah, I mean, needed. tell them it's broken. Brandon, if you you'll give me that info, call. I'll try to call them and see if we can get somebody to come out because that is ridiculous if we're paying for it. I can forward it. all the emails. They they, yeah. We do not come out for that. We don't. Yeah. But anyway. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 maybe they can, rec would, maybe they can mean, recommend someone who can do that kind of work. Maybe they have subcontractors. Maybe there's a wire pay. that just happened to come loose in the back. Right? Or it's that would be nice. on fire. <laughs> Alvy had a good point, though. Would it make sense to get rid of that lease and just outright buy something? Or is it such a big, awesome machine that we really need its capabilities? When we bought it, I mean, when we changed it out, I think we talked, must have considered buying rather than leasing, but for some reason ended up leasing. It came with, you know, ink and toner and whatever, you know, it's a service and things like that were, were part of the deal. But. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a nice looking machine. It looks like it does a lot of work. <laughs> but, but it's still it's not, not doing the job we want it to do. Yeah. That's right. but I can time, go to yeah. Staples and buy a $200 print, mm -hmm. printer mm -hmm. screener mm -hmm. and get us going while this thing is oh, being no, I, worked on. I can get us going. I, I don't know how much stuff I've scanned already. It's crazy. But that's not the point. The point the is point. the volume right. that we're going to be dealing with now right. is just staggering. Mm -hmm. So you're going to need a bigger machine. Okay. Like a boat. Gotcha. Remember that? Gotcha. Need I need bigger machines sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> bigger, bigger than the, bigger than the copier nice or bigger than the printer that, that we have? I'm sneaking that in there. <laughs> so, Thanks for a shatter. So with that, you know, you know, maybe call Ormsby's or something, get someone out to take a look at it. You know, just tell them your problem and just say, these folks aren't responsive. You know, can you send a tech out to take a look at it and set it up? It's just going to be something. It's going to be something very simple. Mm -hmm. I would imagine with a lease, if you have a non-approved techie tech mm -hmm. person come and work on it, that, that destroys the lease. Who's going to stay? Well, too bad for them. Well, they wouldn't help us. That's true. Stop Don't put it in the notes, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I <understand. laughs> yeah. We get charged going over a limit of copies, you know? especially mm -hmm. during tax time. We get, so know, it would be to their benefit to let us scan. Yeah. And yeah, get more money out of us. That's true. Mm -hmm. Would we have to pay for scans as well as prints? If we go over a threshold, threshold yeah. then yeah. we get charged. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I don't understand why they aren't willing to service their own machine. Mm -hmm. When we first bought it, we didn't think we'd need that. I think that mm -hmm. was offered originally, and we didn't need it. So. Well, I think we've beaten this horse to death. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Done. Yeah. Let's move on. You're done? Let's move on. No. No. Oh, okay. So so we can okay. be done talking about our scanning issues. Oh, thank you. So what do we figure we're going to do with the scanner? <laughs> 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 Can you get a thousand dollars for it? I heard boat anchor once. <laughs> we'll put it in the back of the 550. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll sell it for 2000 yeah, 550 with a free scanner. All right. 
So I think I mentioned this earlier in the conversation we had with Paul, that the newly assigned FEMA project manager, who was really great, in three weeks that we worked together, um, she's been more responsive than the person I've been working with since September. So she's no longer with us in terms of working for FEMA. She's on a medical leave. No idea who's going to replace her. Hmm. My emails to the former project manager go into the ether somewhere and just spin around. You know, so, don't know. I have a call into uh, the state of Vermont rep, like the intermediary between the towns and FEMA, mm -hmm. wondering what's going on. You know, because it's just, just, you know, we're just. Is yeah. that, is Didn't that, Ben is that, Rose say that, that you Craig, should call is that him? Craig, some, Craig something? Is that Craig? Uh, that would no, be no. Andy Flagg. That's Andy. Yeah. He works for Ben Rose, I'm yep. pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Andy's a great guy. So, if there's anyone there who can find out, he certainly will. Okay. So, another challenge came up with FEMA, besides mm -hmm. losing their best project manager. Uh, they changed the requirements on us in terms of lap long coordinates. Oh, jeez. So we have this little form, it's called a damage inventory form. And across the top on the legend, it's a, so you, you do name of the damage facility or road, damage description, blah, 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 blah. And it asks for a latitude and longitude. It asks for a coordinate. So we dutifully did 62 of these damage inventories, you know, shooting lap longs and utilizing the application I could get into in the Vermont Enhancement 911 board to have the lat long. So we found out last week that any damage to a road that's more than 200 feet, you need a starting lat long yeah. and you need an ending lat long. Mm -hmm. So going through the damage inventories of the 62, we have 18 that I have to go in and change the damage inventory and redo the maps. Oh, you know. So it's just a representation of the maps that we sent to FEMA. Mm -hmm. Initially, this one had just, this is Cabot Road. It had just one lap long on it. And, but Cabot Road had a damage, I think it was 800 feet. So what you do is you go 800 feet, and this application with the Enhanced 911 board allows you to do that. Mm -hmm. And so where it stops, it'll post a lap long for you. But we have to do that now for 17 more. Mm -hmm. Which is okay. Mm. Yes. Whatever they need. <laughs> we like your attitudes, Kevin. We do. Well, <laughs> we hear, the end, we hear the end of the story with Lenny? I know you're not done yet, but... It... Well, Lenny, no. Lenny and I had a nice chat. He's a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he's from Nebraska. He liked Vermont. He said it's too cold for him, though. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, site visits, the three site visits that he did, don't need him anymore. Even though I've been clamoring for those mm -hmm. for since like for months. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah. Well, you we don't need them now, mm -hmm. but we'll use them. Ambitious, please. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep them. We'll keep them near and dear because we may use them more <laughs> than he thinks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Don't tell him. Uh, so I was going to talk about the Carol Murray Bridge, but we've beaten that horse to death. <laughs> yep. Uh, again, push on. again, and yeah. again. So the expectation this week is to have our first two projects submitted to FEMA, <gasps> which will be like trial balloons. So we'll float them to FEMA, have them circle around, and then I'm sure we'll have questions. But we're hoping not for them not to change the rules. Just keep the rules as they are. And with the information we have now, we can move forward and start putting projects together. And I think we have uh, 20 projects. So of the 62 individual damage inventories, we crunched that down to 20 projects or so. Mm. So hopefully get our two projects into them. Mm -hmm. And get some money flowing in. Oh. We need money. Which two? Uh, East Hill Road and County Road. Yeah. Big, big, big projects. Yeah. And Carol Murray's bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's 
the most important one. Oh, it sure is. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. Well, let me tell her, once we get that check done. <laughs> so that's it. No, no uh, meetings with FEMA because I don't know who you can talk to. Yeah. So well, um, Danielle and I will meet this week and go over stuff and shoot it into FEMA. Wonderful. Yeah. Could you scan your notes and send them to me? <laughs> you don't have to write all that down, Michael. I'm, I'm not going to write it, it all down, but I, I will write something down. But, um, you might have to get recorded on the board yeah. an open wound. <laughs> you want this? Uh, no, I don't need that. Yeah. You want this? No, it's just, <laughs> just kind of a, mm -hmm. I think of an outline will help here. Thank you. Mm. All right. <laughs> you want to scan it in? Take it to the office. <laughs> 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 the scanner works better. <laughs> uh, all right. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay, for all this work, and to Danielle as well. Mm. Um, Michael, would you be willing to put the stormwater mitigation conversation off for? for another meeting or do you want to try to get into it? Um, well, I would like to get, um, I can do this in like a minute. Okay. okay. So, um, and Chris, you're familiar with the project. I was out there with everybody. So yeah. yeah. So the, the, you know, obviously we did the design work um, and then the work on the road really isn't bringing the water to where this stormwater infiltration basin would do its thing with it. So I wanted to be able to let Brian Boyd at CVRPC, because it's in the works to get the funding for the implementation. Does the town want to do it, or shall we tell them that we're no longer interested, able, um, in Why? doing a project? And the reason, I think that at this point, to do the project, we would have to redo the road, um, the grading of the road, and the parking and lot the parking never lot really to be did what it was supposed to do. Um, Nate did come up with a design for that, um, but the road crew kind of did their own thing on it. So, and it will cost, there is a town match, but it was before it would be expensive. It was an expensive town match. Yeah. So, um, oh. unless we want to completely redo the road to make the water flow into this thing, it doesn't really make much sense to put the thing in. I'm afraid that I came to the same conclusion. Mm -hmm. When so this is where we, they were going to dig over in the corner, yes, the north mm -hmm. side of the entryway, and and a ditch that goes all around. Yeah, most uh, of the water coming so down the last like drop of Valley Lake Road mm -hmm. to Route 14, um, the slope of the road was going to divert it to this culvert mm -hmm. um, that's right above where the infiltration Fishing system is, like mm -hmm. a cistern almost. And then all of the water that runs out of the school parking lot. Is suppo was supposed to flow into a ditch on the edge of the parking lot mm -hmm. and it would all channel the water into this infiltration basin and if there was ever overflow there would be there would be a ditch like dug that would slowly bring it down towards the wetland. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so and the water doesn't run out of the parking lot it just kind of sits, it sits in the middle there. pretty much at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be a lot of money to put something like that in that really wouldn't be doing anything. At this point, no. Yeah. And Not after the know, other engineering that we did as triage. Yeah. The way it's set up now, um, you know, the water comes into the Kingsbury branch. There is a catch basin, uh, fairly small, but there is a catch basin. It's way water. undersized. Yeah. And where's right, that? Right by uh, Ron Langevin's, just his parking. Oh, that little, uh, okay. That little, um, mm. yeah. It's undersized by about. 200%. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, but whatever goes into Kingsbury Branch does flow into this flat kind of dispersal area here and then into the town what button, right. which mm -hmm. does this, will we'll do the same work. Mm -hmm. And let's so, not do it. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's what I'm that's thinking. We had a brief conversation. We had a brief conversation about this after we mm -hmm. sort of ran through those plans and we were like, boy, this is getting awfully expensive. Yeah. Mm. And then we had a lot of engineering work that just had to get done, mm -hmm. and it made it. And so somebody else paid less, for it. So it was less reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I just need to. And we have a huge match. Brian, know that the, the town does not. I don't think it's something that we should proceed personally. I agree. I 
Do we need to vote, or can we just say that? I think we can just say that. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I followed it a little bit. I mean, back when I was clerk, I think it was still going on, and it just mm -hmm. seemed kind of silly. And then there was that engineering design that the um, people in charge at the time didn't pay any attention to. And mm -hmm. Well, the concept is totally sound. Yeah. It's a brilliant engineering concept. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's extraordinarily expensive. Mm -hmm. And there is more to it now than there was a few years ago when it was initially designed. Mm -hmm. The design process started yeah. almost five years ago, actually. It's been a long time, yeah. and then there's been a long wait from um, the end of the design work to a potential to implementation where we are now. And it's, you know, it's still in the, in the planning process. Um, and there is money there um, mm -hmm. now, and that was the big wait. It was um, a DEC coming up with the money so that they could. Um, you know, implement, implement project. Oh, right. who would you say, DEC? Department of Environmental oh, okay. Conservation. Who paid for all the design work? Uh, they did also. Okay. Just two grants. Two grants. Yeah. So we didn't pay for any. We paid a small match. We did. Mm -hmm. We paid a small match for the design work. Okay. Yeah. So we're out of a little money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I, I let. I, I think we that. just have to tell them okay. that it's not. It mm -hmm. can't go forward. Okay. If we were if we were flush and we had a lot of time to completely redesign mm -hmm. that entire waterway, I think it'd be great. Yep. Mm -hmm. But we have other things on the fire. Mm -hmm. yeah. We do have a wonderful stormwater management system provided by Mother Nature. Did they even look at that? Well, they don't seem to consider those for some reason. I don't know why. They're engineers. Yeah. That's not what they do. It's not. Uh, Thank you, gentlemen. See you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. Michael, thank you. I'm glad that we addressed you. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. We talked at the last meeting about um, what uh, Alfie had requested as far as the uh, allowing them to use some uh, time towards a 40 hour a week. And <clears throat> at the time, you asked me to look back, when you asked us to look back. And I found that in May of uh, last year, we did approve get, giving, uh, using sick vacation time and sick time towards the hours worked before, um, before someone could get paid overtime. overtime. But then Lizzie had a nice idea. Tell them about that. Yeah, I just wanted to throw in personal time and holiday time as well because it's all the same concept mm -hmm. like the guys work hard hours and should be compensated okay. um, so we now have it reading for the calculation of overtime compensation the use of sick time personal holiday or vacation time can be counted towards hours actually worked that's all I'm going to sign it I move that we accept oh, that sorry no that's okay no, that's okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, I'll second and you too. Okay. That motion. Okay, so moved and seconded. Uh huh. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, okay. Good. Thank you all. Bye, Steve. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. It's basically keeping in line with everything that we're supposed okay. to be doing. Oh. A brandy or that's like a robin for Robin. Oh, okay. I didn't put it in a special format, like not uh, amendment number oh, uh -oh. twelve or whatever. Or just <laughs> use a stapler or something. <laughs> use a stapler. Well, yeah. The rest of the personnel policy would be. Oh, wait, we'll yeah, we'll have to do that. Soon, like I guess mm -hmm. after town meeting. 
Randy, I know. We've been well, hearing that. We, yeah, yeah but Chris time. wants to work on it before he's done, too, because he put so much work into it to begin with. I didn't say uh, that. Okay. So we still might have a little special meeting at some point. Okay. Of course, now we have Michael, so he can. I'd be in. willing to help with that too. Yeah. Um, we were so, we, we, we put quite a bit of time into it. Yeah, we we were almost. We I mean, were so we close. Were like right to the finish line, and <laughs> uh, and uh, things and things changed. I don't know what happened. But <laughs> we had some we we cross the line. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, can I just so please. Uh, last meeting, that was decided that it would be. Oh, effective January January January. January. Yes. Right. So and that's so in that's there, right? I think we wrote it in. Yeah, yeah. it was in there. Is it? Yeah. Yep. Retroactive. It's retroactive. But not retroactive beyond that. Correct. Yeah. Search anyone. Okay. Yes. You want this? Yeah. This is an un unsigned version, but yeah. Yeah, as you work through that, there'll be probably some other things that I want to chime in on also. The personnel policy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have a copy of the current? I do. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that is the end of the regular business for this meeting. I'd like to make a motion to move into executive session for... One VSA 1313A3. I have a second. I'm not sure we need I'm not sure we need it, but it, I don't know. I don't know. You I'm tell, good it's, I didn't put it in the agenda. I know, I didn't realize you still put it in. I <laughs> okay. thought you talked about it. I know, no, no the, I had already put it in when we decided. <laughs> okay. yeah, so okay. If it's not necessary, okay. I will take a motion to adjourn. Okay. All right. Has it, everything been signed? Uh, it is in the process. Mm. It'll be signed before. There are two sets of minutes. I have the warning. Is that the, I got the warning. Is that the old one or the new one? I think it's the new one. Uh, okay. So, Randy, can you send me uh, the yep. send it? Yeah, that's the one that you just printed off. Thanks. Yep. This is. That is. This is the new it's one. It's yes. got different, okay. different fonts in there, so, so I guess it doesn't matter for the record. So he'll fix it before it goes in the town report. Diana. Hi, Alfie. Have a good night. You have a good night. Alfie, Alfred, thank you. Yeah. Bye. Appreciate it, man. Bye. What? Oh, nothing. You're looking at a guy two heads. So, did you guys adjourn? We're adjourned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm.